Hello everyone, and welcome to South Coast Focus. Coming to you from sunny Mission Viejo, I'm your host, Garrett Bell. Today we'll be sharing three hometown stories about people living in Orange County who through their talent and effort are creating just what they want to see in the world around them. We'll meet singer-songwriter Ellie, who's attempting to make it big. We'll hear Jeopardize from local rapper Jamal. And finally, we'll learn about how a young queer woman, Sophia, is leading the change she wants to see in the male-dominated sport of skating. If you've listened to any hot new music, you've probably stumbled across a genre called indie or independent music. The genre often comes straight out of a musician's home studio and straight to your device. This process cuts out the middleman of a record label and allows the musician to get whatever they truly want to produce straight to their audience without having to get permission. The straightforward process of indie music has helped shape the pathway that one independent artist hopes to find. Ellie Kayser hopes to see this path through to the end. Let's tune in to her journey. Ellie Kayser is a singer-songwriter born in Orange County and is determined to be the next big indie musician. Ellie began her journey in music at a young age, working with a guitar at first and eventually adding piano to her portfolio. She would find out that she not only enjoys playing music, but also writing. She would write and play for her friends and family, finding this to be a fulfilling and potentially profitable path for her future. A few of the accomplishments Ellie has made also included leading her church's band and singing at her graduation ceremony. Add even more to the reasoning behind Ellie's playing, she's found music to be a perfect pathway for her to express her feelings and really reach out to others around her that she feels traditional conversation really can't. Ever since I was a little kid, my mom would have to sit down and be like, okay, do you feel sad about this? And I'd be like, no. And she'd be like, do you feel happy about this? And I'd be like, no. And she'd be like, do you feel you know, annoyed? And I'd be like, yeah. And she'd be like, okay, does that make you feel you know, this way and this way? And I'd be like, yes, no. You know. Ironically, Conversation is what she hopes to get out of her work. My goal in writing and being a songwriter and putting my music out is to help people um, verbalize their emotions and to have them feel heard and understood and um, understand their own emotions and to listen to a song and have that help them process what they're feeling. Even with high hopes for a standout independent career, the uphill battle that Ellie knows she is facing can prove to be daunting at times. At 60,000 uploads a day on average, platforms like Spotify seem as a discouraging endeavor. Even with the large amount of competition, Ellie still needs to find time to gain inspiration from other artists around her, both past and present. Being independent brings problems that those who sign to a label wouldn't have to face. Additionally, adding layers such as marketing being left both on Ellie and her manager's plates. Recently, with the blowup of TikTok, Ellie has found it to be a great platform to put herself on that attracts her target audience. With that being said, TikTok works similar to Spotify and seems to be hit or miss with the audience that Ellie hopes to attract. She hopes to advance her career with the release of an EP in the near future to solidify herself as an established musician. Her recent release of the single Tacoma is a stunning example of the endearing indie R&B that she hopes to break into. I just have one song out right now. Um, we are slowly but surely working on an EP. Um, so as soon as that is out, um, honestly that's what I'm focusing on right now. It's just EP is the next step. Um, and then after that, you know, shows hopefully, um, and whatever opportunities come up, honestly. <laughs> if you would like to find out even more about Ellie's music, you can find and stream her latest release, Tacoma, out now on Spotify and Apple Music. Additionally, stay tuned to her Spotify and Instagram at Kayser to make sure you're one of the first to hear about her upcoming EP. Similar is the indie genre of rap, one that started at block parties in the Bronx, New York City in the early 1970s. Here we find a middle ground between poetry and rhythm, one that often lies upon a moody tape track. A perfect example to encompass this genre of fast-paced poetry is the local act Jamal Brown. Let's take a look at his recent visit he took to the Saddleback studio to lay down some bars. She loves gonna get you. 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 
Love's gonna get you, love's gonna get you. Love's gonna get you, love's gonna get you. See, I'm blessed to be here next to you It's a dream come true, caress my boo Look in your eyes and they sparkle like the stars do Calm the dawn when I'm at a rage, though It's more than meant to the connection, affection And caring, adventurous and daring Passions, patience and planning Constant understanding, it's demanding But we standing more than you need All that you want as we proceed But all the stress, sometimes you wonder if Your choice was the best, then think of what's to come and all the times that were great And don't forget The sex enough to never ever sleep is good And the sound of your voice Is like a bird's song Then I seen this young lady Driving along I caught her eyes I'm probably gonna do wrong Yo, I can't jeopardize my love, compromise the bond Gotta fight the feeling of the flesh, gotta see Damn, I love my lady, but look at that lady And the vibe's so strong, but I gotta hold with on can't Jeopardize my love, compromise the bond Gotta fight the feeling of the flesh, gotta stay strong Damn, I love my lady, but look at that lady And the vibe's so strong, but I gotta hold on I bust the right and she followed Then I parked the whip and lost all visual hunger's taking over restaurant on the corner i step in ask for a seat take my order see the shorty from the car in my peripheral she came close to me wonder wasn't intentional or just a lust for me she said how you be you alone for lunch you want to eat me excuse me eat with me my name's sheree i said i'm jamal brown mike mold cheek what am i doing my girl is who i'm here to meet i'm early and she said she gonna be running late why at this time when I need an escape at home Argues, grabs and shakes Now temptation all in my face Slow down, time to think Yo, I can't Compromise the bond Gotta fight the feeling of the flesh Gotta stay strong Damn, I love my lady But look at that lady And the vibe so strong But I gotta hold on, can't Jeopardize my love Compromise the bond Gotta fight the feeling of the flesh Gotta stay strong Damn, I love my lady But look at that lady And the vibe so strong But I gotta hold well, I met this chick, I'm so slick, so I think it's the game in me At home I got my lady, but oh baby, that's my honey But my homie down is what she do at home, wifey on the side, bitchy One on my time, once I tapped the coochie And this mushy gushy went bubbly, called me pokey And I got a spot for a really nasty, raunchy, freaky Just trying to freak me, but what about my main lady? Not a slouch, a little mama She gon' bail me out, depend on her with my seat She's my spouse and outside Shorty wildin' out, callin' the house with a violent mouth, breaking windows. I'm blaming my neighbor's kids. Tell my girl I handle it so I teach you how to be a player, how I clean up. You the one who told me it's all about it, not what? Yo, I can't jeopardize my love, compromise the bond. Gotta fight the feeling of the flesh, gotta stay strong. Damn, I love my lady, but look at that lady and the vibe so strong. But I gotta hold on, can't jeopardize my love, compromise the bond. Gotta fight the feeling of the flesh, gotta stay strong. Damn, I love my lady, but look at that lady and the vibe so strong. But I gotta hold on, hold on. Jamal believes that music should only be released once it's flawless. Luckily for us, he has a few songs coming out the pipeline for the near future. If you're intrigued and would like to hear more of Jamal's music, you can find him on his Instagram at the underscore Jamal Brown underscore show. Even in a highly diverse community like Southern California, some activities and sports have always carried heavier labels attached to them than others. One such activity would be the heavily male-dominated sport of skateboarding. According to skatereview.com, only a mere 23.9% of all skaters are female. With the addition of homophobia being rampant in skater communities, it takes people such as Sofia Marquez to break past barriers like gender and culture to create a more open and inviting common ground. Let's tune into her story. Sofia Marquez is a young female OC skater who strives in creating a safe space for all skaters and encourages others to do the same. She tells us about how her brother and his friends inspired her to get into skating and a bit about what her main method of skating is. So my senior year of high school, my brother was actively skating a lot and I knew I was going to need a new activity to preoccupy myself with since I wouldn't have marching band anymore. So I figured I might pick up skating because it looked a lot of fun and my brother was super into it and I thought his friends were really cool and I liked the way they skated and the way they dressed and the whole idea of being a part of counterculture was very interesting to me, so I thought I might try it, and then I didn't, and I really liked it. So I ride Goofy, 
and it's not the most common apparently, but I feel like I've met a lot more people who ride goofy than people who ride regular. But the way you figure that out is, say you're going to take a step up a flight of stairs, whatever foot you put up first, that's going to be your dominant foot. With help from her brother and new friends, Sophia finally finds her inner OC skater and moves to bigger and better things. Sophia enters her first competition in 2018, snagging first place in a female division of only two other women. Currently, so many events have had to be canceled due to the pandemic. Fortunately, Sophia was still able to enter in the competition, but reflects on how difficult it was given the current atmosphere. Instead of being able to compete in person, Sophia had to send in a minute long video of her showing off her skills. They all had an online alternative where you would basically film a one minute clip of yourself doing tricks and like use iMovie or whatever to compile it together. So many people there, you're just like trying to get your clip and there's people snaking you and your, per your peripheral vision is kind of messed up because you're wearing a helmet and a mask and I'm not usually used to wearing a helmet when I skate but I had to tend to this competition and it, it was very frustrating. But in the end, I, I uh, think it paid off because I got first place again. Not only does Sophia encourage others by being a female in a male dominant activity, but she also wants others to feel comfortable enough to start skating no matter who you are. Sophia has created a group that tailors to people who wouldn't usually feel comfortable stepping into the bowl on their own. Trick Chicks is a safe skate place for anybody to come and show what they've got or learn from some amazing riders. There's a bunch of us gals and um, queer, gender non-conforming people, um, people of color, just general minorities, generally speaking. And we all got together and we would share our clips and then like, I, I'll, post, I'll post a clip on the page because I ran it. Uh, we had a really good turnout and I think that was partially due to how much work I put in and a bunch of the other girls as well. I brought boards for everyone in case they didn't have one. I had protective gear, snacks, water, um, sunscreen, first aid. This experience not only encouraged so many to pick up their boards, but it also taught Sophia a lot about herself and how she can continue to encourage others not to be fearful and just go for it. And it must be on your own prerogative to want to try something new. There's the phrase, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It's basically the same thing. They want to, it has to be their own personal choice to try something new, to try something scary. You can't just stay stagnant. You gotta grow as a person and as a skater. You push yourself, because if you don't push yourself, you're not gonna get anything done. Creating common ground in an area of interest for people of all different backgrounds is both a challenge and a great way to see others' perspectives. While Sophia has since left the Orange County area, she still advocates for people like herself to get involved in smaller skater communities like the ones she created in Orange County. After all, you'll never know what like-minded people need a safe space for their favorite activities. Today we were able to learn about three incredible individuals and their ability to put their talents and creativity into action, whether it be through digital means like Ellie and Jamal's music creation or physical like Sophia's skating community, you can always pursue the things you want to see and become the root of the change in the space around you like Orange County. Their stories prove to us that determination and ambition can build an extensive pathway to the success that they hope to find. Once again, I'm your host, Garrett Bell. Thank you for tuning in. Stay safe and take care. Hello everyone and welcome to South Coast Focus. I'm your host, Adrian Alzamora. Today we'll be sharing two stories and a musical performance from local citizens in Orange County, California. We'll learn about a young photographer, Casey Ta, who turned her hobby of developing film into a profitable business, an independent hip hop musician, Jamal Brown, about to publicly release some of his music, and Alexis Unter, a swimmer with Trisomy 21, also known as Down Syndrome, who aims to qualify for the Down Syndrome World Swimming Championship. Have you ever taken a picture and had it saved instantly so you can post it on social media? Must be nice, right? But what if you want to develop film and you need it quickly? You can still drop some off at CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart, but they'll just send it to be developed at a lab. However, with fewer labs, the turnaround time can be lengthy. 
Casey Ta is a 19-year-old photographer based in Laguna Hills, California, who took action by developing her own film and then eventually built it into her own development business. Let's check it out. Someone so young, someone super interesting. I'm Casey, I'm 19, and I am the owner of a film lab here in Southern California. Casey started out as a film photographer, but later grew it into a bigger project. It's like a passion project of mine that's like developed over the course of like four or five years. She grew interest in developing film after Spike and film photos within her friend group. It used to just be like something I casually did when I was, when I had other friends that like shot film casually in high school. However, Casey ran into a problem. There weren't many options for her to develop. Locally, there's not a lot of options to do it and their service isn't that good. She made the choice to create her own film lab for quality assurance. Then I decided that I was developing so much that I needed to like cement something in there. And through different like names over the years and different like kinds of like ways of promoting it, I like cemented Harvey Film Lab. Casey made the film lab in the safety of her own home, adapting to a business that was slowly fading away. With this custom home setup, she was able to learn and adapt and grow her business. The emotional connection with film and being a part of the process of developing it became something that stood near to her. The physical aspect of being able to like take a photo and then develop it yourself and see the negative and then from there be able to scan it and then archive it and it's just like the physicality of it is what makes it important to me. After seeing the success in her work and the demand for developing film, Casey strived to grow her business. And from there I've been able to like kind of expand and promote myself in a way where not just like local clientele reaches out to me, it's more on a nationwide scale where people ship me film. To her surprise, the film lab popularity grew and her name became more well known. I'm pretty proud of like how, how much like attention it's got from like people outside of like my friend group. As young as she is, she doesn't see herself stopping and wants to continue to merge herself with the dying industry. I'm like motivated to keep doing it. Like when I've worked like other jobs, I just like don't feel the same way. And being able to like conduct my own schedule and like work from home too, is just like such a big bonus that I can't really see myself like switching. I think I'm always gonna be developing my own film at least till film like dies, which I hope that doesn't happen. If you're interested in having your own film roll process, check out Casey's Instagram, at Harvey Film Lab, for more information about her business. Casey Ta is a true inspiration of young photographers and entrepreneurs who want to continue the legacy of developing film. Now we have an exclusive musical performance by New York native Jamal Brown. Jamal says his love of music began when he was only five years old and has grown since then. His musical influences include Michael Jackson, The Locks, DMX, Tupac, Ice Cube, and Nas. Jamal's son, done to me, is about accidentally finding the love of your life and leaving Playboy si lifestyle to have family. Here's Jamal Brown.
Thank you so much, Jamal Brown, for performing for us today. Jamal creates his music to use in his short films and other projects he works on as a student here at Saddleback College. Done to Me will be available for download on Spotify, iTunes, and Apple Music on June 1st. To show your appreciation for Jamal, mark your calendar and download his music. I know when it's hot outside, I'll go for a competitive swim. But competitive swimmers beat the heat when they race. A prime example of this is Orange County's own Alexis Unter. Alexis swims at Mission Viejo High School and trains independently in the off-season. According to the Center for Disease Control, one in 700 babies born in the U.S. has trisomy 21. Alexis, however, excels in the pool despite her disability. Why don't we just dive in and take a look at all her accomplishments? Trisomy 21 is commonly called T21 or Down syndrome. Alexis Unter has T21 but doesn't let it stop her. She is one of the fastest female T21 swimmers in the U.S. I started swimming when I was a kid, and it went pretty well. Raising a child with Down syndrome has been one of the biggest blessings uh, of our lifetime. I mean, everything that you thought was important in life, it just absolutely isn't. She's deaf in her left ear. She has complete uh, profound hearing loss there. We had a lot of therapies that we had to do, um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and she was always such a trooper, and she always worked so hard. And I see that now today, how hard she works with swimming. She always loved to swim when she was little. She loved the water. She unfortunately had no fear of the water, so we really thought that getting her swim lessons and teaching her how to swim was really for safety at first. So when Alexis was in middle school, she said, I want to swim on the high school swim teams. And that's when I, I said yes to go to swim every day, nonstop. We've always treated her just like the rest of the kids in our family. Um, always had the expectations really, really high for whatever she wants to do. It's been really fun for her and fun for us as parents to see her in a high school sport, um, her teammates cheering her on, the other team cheering her on, the people in the stands cheering her on. <laughs> um, just for her, you know, to be part of it has been awesome. It's so fun to see her pride 
and the self-confidence that she's gathered in constantly going out and competing in these high school swim meets and showing what she can actually do and, and feeling, I think, normal like all the other girls do out there. In February of 2022, USA Down Syndrome Swimming held its first national training camp and national championship swim meet at the Rosen Aquatic and Fitness Center in Orlando, Florida. About 40 athletes attended the camp where they swam, did strength training and yoga, and learned about nutrition. Deep inhale. And swan dive it down. I liked when I swim my freestyle swim and being on my times in swimming. Alexis qualifies to compete in six individual events and is eligible to compete in relays at the Down Syndrome International Swimming World Championship in Portugal in October 2022. I am looking forward to swim a little bit more faster. We never thought we would go to Portugal with Alexis to swim. <laughs> and we never thought, you know, she'd be in a national team for the USA. I'll tell you, every joy and every success that we've had with Alexis has been that much sweeter uh, due to overcoming some of these challenges that she's faced with. And for Alexis to be competing in Portugal is incredible. I've never been to Portugal before and I'm really excited to go to Portugal. Alexis and her teammates, their parents, coaches, and the USA Down Syndrome Swimming Board members are now planning to meet and prepare the trip for the DSISO World Championship in Portugal, October 15th through 23rd, 2022. To join the journey and to learn more about T21 swimming, visit USA Down Syndrome Swimming at USA Down Syndrome Swimming Instagram. I hope you find inspiration from our three guests today. Casey Taw's entrepreneurial spirit to turn her passion of film photography and development of, into a career. Jamal Brown's journey of growing from hip hop fan to performer on the cusp of releasing his music to the world. And Alexis Unter, leveraging her disability into the ability to experience Portugal and compete in the world championship. These are three examples of wonderful things that can come our way when we pursue our dreams. Once again, I'm your host, Adrian Alzamora. Thank you so much for watching South Coast Focus. Go find your passion. Take care. We'll see you later. Hello and welcome to South Coast Focus. I'm your co-host Cole Sherburn and we have quite the show for you today. We'll be looking at a family on Mission Viejo and their journey to build a Gigi's Playhouse in Laguna Niguel. Then we'll listen to a performance from a New York rapper and Saddleback student Jamal Brown. Finally, we'll take a deep dive into the life of Linda Farmer and what it was like growing up during the Civil Rights Movement. Down syndrome is a genetic disorder where a person has extra chromosomes. It is currently the most common chromosomal condition with 6,000 babies being born in the U.S. with the condition every year. Kim and Charlie Horner are a mother and son in Mission Viejo, working towards the establishment of a Gigi's Playhouse for children with Down syndrome in Laguna Niguel. Gigi's Playhouse is an organization that gives services and support to people with Down syndrome. Gigi's Playhouse is a nonprofit organization that provides support and care to people with Down syndrome and their families. The organization began in 2003 after Nancy Johnny had a child with Down syndrome and wanted a place for families and their children where they could find resources, networking, and support. Since then, Gigi's has expanded to 55 locations nationwide with 200 additional playhouse inquiries and more locations being built with these efforts being led by locals in the community. One such person is Kim Horner, who has a child with Down syndrome, who is leading the funding and building of a playhouse location right here in South Orange County. We were introduced to Gigi's Playhouse from a friend of ours that relocated 
and um, I realized that there was a need here in Southern Orange County to have a place for the Down syndrome community as well of, uh, as other special needs um, to gather and to have a place to feel like they're part of it. It's for the extended families as well as the Down syndrome individual. So once I became familiar with Gigi's Playhouse, um, I realized that this was something that we needed to put our efforts toward bringing to Orange County. So those people, the Down syndrome community in Orange County could have a place to gather. Kim Horner's son, Charlie, is one such person who is a part of the Playhouse program. While it may seem like Kim is the one who does all the work, Charlie is also a key player, working alongside his mother to organize and help with fundraising for the new location and the organization in general. I have some friends from 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 New York and they put some money in that 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 I can have a fun place to hang out with all my friends and 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 I would just like to help them. Through Gigi's Playhouse, Charlie has gone on to learn many useful life skills. I learned how to cook independently in the kitchen, and I learned how to exercise. Gigi's Playhouse is an organization that serves people with Down syndrome from birth all the way to adulthood, and with many exciting things planned in the pipeline for the coming years, the future of the organization has never looked brighter. What we hope to do with the future of Gigi's is um, every Gigi's that's ever opened has no, none of them have ever closed due to lack of funding. They've only grown and grown. So ideally, once we get ours up running successfully, there's others that have grown into items such as Gigi's University, which is a college-oriented program for college-age um, students, as well as something called Mugs and Hugs, which would be wonderful. They serve coffee, and these are the mugs that they make for, for uh, hugs and mugs. The new location is expected to be completed in the fall of this year. When it opens, it will feature things such as a workout room, a game room with the Nintendo Switch, a classroom for tutoring, and a kitchen to teach people how to cook. The photos shown are from the New York location and should hopefully give an idea of what the playhouse will look like once it's completed. This new location will serve as a hub for the South Orange County Down Syndrome community and will give people and their families the care and support they have been lacking for so long. Thanks to the efforts of local leaders like Kim Horner, they will have a place they can go to where they won't be alone and people with Down Syndrome can achieve their full potential. I would like to personally thank Kim and Charlie for being a part of our program. If you would like to learn more about Gigi's Playhouse, you can visit their website at ggsplayhouse.org where you can join this year's Fit Acceptance Challenge. Before I sign off to hand over duties to my co-host Berkeley, we want to welcome a talented artist and fellow student here at Saddleback College, Jamal Brown. Jamal was born in New York during the birth and golden age of hip hop and started writing his own music that is inspired by his own life experiences and surroundings. Jamal has since moved across the country multiple times to pursue his passions. Today, Jamal is here to play one of his own creations titled Skinny. Please welcome Jamal Brown to the stage. Girl, just keep me on your mind. She's been on mine. Her name's Divine. Ring, ring, ring. She's on the line. At the W, standing outside. Impressed like a dime plus nine. We met, struck, I confess. Plush, that means the best. Continental Express, Montemental, yes. The moment, the movement, seductive. Let's get secluded. Great attitude. Don't act foolish in the bed. We could be a fool with all your privacies that I want to fool with. Ha, 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 ah, 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 in the back of the bar, in the dressing room. We can fit it in all at the mall. Ho, ho, simply you just drop me crazy. Do that dance, but do it safely. Bang, 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 like make that baby scream and scream and scream and take me. You know that I like your body. Yeah, I'm skinny, but I'm cocky. Just like Rocky, Rico suave, call me papi, 
and say, hey, what's your name? I'm sincere, no games, the fame all in my lane. Pretty fast, like your pretty ass. No disrespect, there's so much class. Please, pretty baby, give me a chance. Let's get naked and do that dance. Do it fast, do it slow, do it with no pants. Pull it with your hands. Missile launch like a soldier. Caffeine like coffee, got a generation just like Pepsi. Position your body, ooh, nasty. Hot, hot cootie, smack the booty. Ding-a-ling-ling, -ling. puff it like a Lucy. And the neighbors think my name is Doomy. Sex face, you look like Doofy. When I'm handling, I handle my duty. Simply, you just drive me crazy. Do that dance, but do it safely. Bang, bang, bang. Like make that baby scream and scream and scream and take me You know that I like your body, yeah I'm skinny but I'm cocky Knock you out just like Rocky, Rico Suave, call me Papi Girl just keep me on your mind, yeah how you doing, everything's fine Yeah let me know, just text me the time, aphrodisiacs be one and dine Simply you just drive me crazy, do that dance but do it safely Bang 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 like make that Baby, scream and scream and scream and take me. You know that I like your body. Yeah, I'm skinny, but I'm cocky. Knock you out just like Rocky. Rico Suave, call me Poppy. Hello, welcome back. I'm your co host, Berkeley Farmer, and thank you so much to Jamal for his performance of Skinny. This song and others are featured on Jamal's short films such as Saving Miss Cha-Cha and his upcoming short film, Trouble in the Culture, so be sure to check them out. For this next segment, I take you back in time to when my grandma was growing up as an African-American female during the Civil Rights Movement, a time when African-Americans fought to ensure racial equality. Her personal accounts tell us all about what happened during those dark times and how her family reacted to acts of hate. She discusses the national reaction to the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama. We hope that Linda's stories contribute to the conversation of the civil rights era and the impact of the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing. Linda Farmer is a retired grandmother who lives in Orange, California, with her husband Doug of over 50 years. Out of their marriage, Linda has three children and many more grandchildren. Her family means the most to her, as do their happiness and well-being. And certainly, when you sit in her living room, you can tell that it is a big thing that defines her. My name her. is Linda Farmer, and I am originally from Kokomo, Indiana. It's a small town in the Midwest, close to Indianapolis. Born and raised in Kokomo, Indiana, Linda Farmer grew up in a time when racism was frequent. This type of activity was not uncommon in Indiana, as the second wave of the Ku Klux Klan was founded in the state in 1915. Because of this, Linda would have encountered people on a daily basis who were exposed to the hateful ideology of the KKK. Even though there was no segregation policy on the books where Linda lived, she was not spared of such discriminatory behavior from shopkeepers and residents of her own community. So myself and three or four of my friends, because there really were only like four or five black families that attended the Catholic Church in the school. So. Um, we went on our lunch hour and we sat down and we didn't get waited on and we didn't get waited on and we didn't get waited on. The sense of vulnerability became most evident on September 15th, 1963, when the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing took place in Birmingham, Alabama. 19 sticks of dynamite were used to blow the foundations of the aforementioned church by a local chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. Four people were killed by the bombing in Alabama. When the Birmingham bombing took place, so I remember that very clearly because I remember how upset my parents were and how apprehensive they were and having, you know, the kids going to school because we, you know, we just didn't know. Tensions were high. Things were really um, volatile. This fear was fueled by the fact that no one involved in the attack was neither immediately arrested nor convicted. From Linda's perspective, life was delicate. The hateful words and deeds that had been directed towards her could easily turn into physical and violent conduct. This especially struck a chord considering the ties the Ku Klux Klan had to her home state. Um, it's, 
it was a tragedy. Yeah. There's no question about yeah. it. It was just really sad. And I think it made a lot of people uncomfortable because we didn't know what the situation was going to be. At age 18, Linda Farmer left Indiana to live with her soon-to-be husband, Doug, in California. Because of Doug's military commitments, this young family found themselves moving all over the country. They lived at various military installations from Florida to Virginia to Arizona. Linda's treatment varied from place to place, but she noticed one theme that cultivated kindness, and that was a diverse community. It is within these conditions that Linda has been judged on the content of her character and not on her physical appearance. And I have learned through the years to accept people based on who they are and not what they look like. The early chapters in her life in Indiana were not purely defined by the abhorrent actions of others. Linda had a loving family in her youth, and it is loving actions that she seeks to highlight as a mother and grandmother. The aftermath of the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing served as a driving force of the Civil Rights Act to ensure all citizens receive equal treatment under the law. We'd like to know more about the civil rights movement where racial equality can be reached in other areas of American society. Please visit the NAACP.org. Thank you to everyone that was a part of our program today. Linda with her touching stories about her childhood and how it shaped her, getting to know more about the program centered around helping kids with Down syndrome, and hearing a great performance from our very own student, Jamal Brown. Their creativity, grit, and character that they all exhibit serve as an inspiration to us to all here at Saddleback. Thank you and have a great night.